All right. This is Monday, September 21st, 2020. And I wanted to go over the pro demand uh, feature in auto shop. Pro demand is a website that we use uh, here in the auto service shop at the, at the school. It's also a very common uh, source for information for automotive techs and all over the around the world, actually, um, it's a product of Mitchell. Mitchell is the managing software that I use for all of the accounting purposes and billing and things like that for our auto shop. And most shops, independent shops especially, will use some sort of a program designed for this type of thing. Um, but also, the Pro Demand is the software that we use to consolidate all the information in, um, like all the all the uh, manufacturer specific information so anything that's not proprietary uh, is bought by mitchell pro demand company and is consolidated and put into a database where anybody can go and look up information so this is the website uh, prodemand.com it's pretty simple to get to uh, login we have a subscription we we purchase students are free to use it um, Muskegon CTC is our, is our username. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show you the password online anyway, uh, but everybody has access to that. There's a big tag on the, on the workbench, uh, that has username and password for this. So if you're, if you're here in the school, you already know what it is. If you're one of my students, you already know what the password is. So. Uh, and if you don't, I will get that to you the next time you're in class. Uh, this is the first page that you're going to see. This is kind of the default setting. There's a couple of different ways to get to vehicle information, but this is probably the most common way. Um, I could also run a VIN number. If I had the VIN number of the vehicle, uh, the, seven, the, the, the VIN number has information that has like the year, the make, the manufacturer, the, the engine code, stuff like that. And so they could automatically run it for you that way. Um, the license plate or state is a way to look up a vehicle that we might already have in our database. Um, vehicle history, if you worked on a vehicle, let's say let's two, on Tuesday, we worked on you know this 2001 Focus, I could pull that up. It's an easy way to get back to it as well. Um, but the easiest, the, the, the basic way, the most common way is to go right here to vehicle selection. Um, I mean, we got a bunch of, bunch of vehicles in the shop here. I'm just going to pick one at random. We have a 2001 Dodge Neon. Um, again, feel free to look up any, any, any vehicle that you happen to be working on or you're, if you're at home working on it, students, feel free to use this. Um, here, en engine. Here's a here's a dilemma that my students often run into. There's two. It's a two liter, but what two liter is it? Um, if you look at the VIN number on an engine, the eighth VIN code on every car is the engine code. So the eighth VIN character, and I'll just I'll look up a VIN number uh, for an automobile. So this is what a VIN number looks like. Right, that's the VIN number here. There's one, the eighth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that right there is the eighth code. That's the engine code for whatever vehicle this is. All this, all these mean something different on a vehicle, um, but that eighth one is the VIN engine code. Um, and here's here's where VIN numbers are located. That's the most common spot to find it. There's one under the hood. They're in the dash. They're all over the place. But, so the VIN number for the, our Dodge Neon, the eighth VIN is a C. All okay. right, um, it's an SE. The difference, incidentally, between those two might be something like the difference between a turbocharged engine and a non-turbocharged, or a dual overhead cam versus a single overhead cam, or something like that. Just variations of a two liter. Not all, not all two liters are the same. Uh, and then this one has an automatic transmission. So I'm gonna. Use this vehicle. Here's the the page that comes up first. Um, common common issues, common DT, common trouble codes, DTCs, common symptoms. 
All right, top searches. You can look up all this stuff. If you're interested in finding uh, fluid capacities, like how much oil should it take? How much, uh, you know, how much engine oil it takes to take four and a half quarts, takes a 5W30, uh, there's 12 and a half gallons in the fuel tank, 2.2 2 quarts of manu manual transmission fluid, if it had a manual transmission, right? Four quarts of automatic transmission, if it's got an automatic transmission. So there's a lot of information like that for fluid capacities. Technical bulletins. Okay. These are all of the technical service bulletins and recalls that were on this vehicle. If you're interested in looking up recalls for a vehicle, uh, here they are. If you're interested in um, looking for a tech service bulletin on a vehicle, they're all listed here too. So if you're working on the cruise control system, there's a known problem with this fault. Uh, you know, and you could read through that as, as, as you wish. I'm not going to read that to you now because that's not what this little lesson is for. But you get the idea. Um, all this information is there f for you. Uh, the service manual is the main place that I like to go um, f for most of the information. And most of what we're going to be working on and what we need to look up as far as wiring diagrams go Here's system wiring diagrams. Here's, so let, let's say oh, I'll do the exterior lights because this is one of the tasks that some of our students, our second year students are working on. Uh, I'm looking up headlight circuits, All right? So here's, here's our headlight circuit for that Dodge Neon, okay? So there's certain questions that are going to arise, like tab, we're going to have you test some voltage at the headlight. All right, we're going to have to test uh, the ground circuit. We're going to want to know what ground numbers these headlights ground to. Right, So the right headlight grounds to ground number 107, which is located behind the right headlamp. If I wanted to test power uh, for the low beams versus the high beams, which one of these would I test? Is it the violet and red, or is it the red and orange? Well, I can follow these back up here. And this takes me to low beam output. Okay, so the instrument cluster is going to send a signal out here. This is the low beam. Goes up here, through here, through the switch, through the fuse, back down to the light. That's the low beam. So if I was going to test low beam, low beam voltage, I would disconnect the connector at the headlight, and I would look for this violet wire with the red tracer and either probe it with my um, with my uh, with a, a pin to the voltmeter, the DVOM, or I could use a test light um, or whatever whatever the task sheet is asking you to do. However, it wants you to test it. That's that's what it's going to do. And then the red and orange is probably going to be my my I beam if I follow that back. So there's that information. Other information that you might want to know about. Um, Brake systems, mechanical hydraulic brake systems. This is all the information about adjusting brakes, about component testing, about removing and installing brakes. There's procedures for everything in here. Here's the removal and installation uh, procedure for the shoes, removal and installation procedure for the rotors, removal and installation procedure for the wheel cylinders. All right. There's torque specs for everything. There's how to bleed the brake system. So I don't expect you to be an expert in this by the first time you use it. But when you do get into most of the things that we do, when I ask you if you've checked on pro demand for a procedure, this specifically is what I'm looking for. All right, uh, there'll be a lot more information on this to come, but for now, I think that's probably good for you.